Hey everyone, Graham here from the recordingrevolution.com with a product review for you today. Again, trying to review products that I actually use pretty regularly so I can give you at least an informed opinion and you can do with it what you like. Today we're going to be looking at the CLA Classic Compressors from Waves. This is a bundle, a plug-in bundle that gives you these four plugins you see right here. They're all compressors modeled after some of uh, audio's most famous uh, and legendary compressors that are pretty much in every single uh, pro studio out there in hardware form. And lots of companies are modeling these plugins for good reason because they are very useful. They're kind of like the, the basic tools that a lot of comp uh, mixers and recording engineers use day in and day out. And um, I've used the hardware components of just about all four of these um, before. Uh, but I mix and work entirely in the box. So the plugin versions are very helpful to me. And specifically, we're looking at the Waves versions of these plugins, and even more specifically, the CLA versions. Chris Lord Algae, Grammy Award winning mixer, um, has partnered with them to have, they came in his studio and basically modeled his favorite units of his own uh, versions of these, these uh, hardware units. So basically, these are his select versions, and they kind of picked the best ones and done really good models of an LA 2A, an LA 3A, and then two. Uh, revisions of the 1176, both uh, the blackface version and then the blue stripe revision B. Um, so it's you get four compressors in the bundle, and they are very musical and very helpful. So what I'm going to do is play you a smidge of a song I'm working on where these compressors are all over the place, because the last year or so I've been using these on just about every mix. And then I'm going to show you the brief overview of what uh, each compressor does and give you my opinion, and then you can take it or leave it. Here's a song I was working on. Compressors are on all, almost all the tracks, all over the place. You saw them coming in when the drums kicked in and a vocal. And uh, and what I want to do is just sort of give you the brief rundown of how these tools are really helpful and uh, why I'm using them all over the place. So pretty much some of the most famous compressors on the planet are right in front of you in terms of um, ones that every engineer is going to know and love and have a specific you know, bent towards, uh, you know, some guys use an LA-2A on vocals all the time. Other guys prefer the 1176. They're very, very common tools to see. And so I think as a mixer, it's great to know why they're so common. Now, whether you use them or not, it's up to you. You shouldn't use something just because a bunch of people in the last 30, 40 years in audio have used it, but you should learn about it uh, because there's probably a reason they've stuck around for many, many years and see if it can be something useful uh, in your mixes. Because every DAW is going to come with a compressor. And so why do you need four more compressors? Well, you don't. Okay, you don't need more compressors to compress or to do what you need to do with the compressor. Okay, stock compressors are going to do everything you need them to do. These compressors are a little different because they have their own unique sonic characteristics. So they don't just compress, but they definitely color the sound of your audio. And, uh, and that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, let's start with the LA-2A. The LA-2A is basically a smooth optical compressor. It was a tube compressor, and it's only got two knobs, people. So this is great for people like me. You've got a peak reduction, which is really how much compression is it doing, where is the, uh, the threshold kind of set, and, uh, and it's going to start compressing the more you dial that in, and then a makeup gain knob. Uh, and then the only difference is you get a compressor or a limit switch, and that's going to change really how hard it's compressing. So if you flip it to limit, it's really going to catch peaks and slam them down a bit more. The beauty of the LA-2A is how smooth it sounds. And so I will use this um, particularly on very musical vocals. I like it on vocals where it's, you know, a ballad or, or even on this song. This is kind of relatively slow, so the vocals are smooth. It just 
grabs the vocal and it doesn't do any crazy artifacts to it. It just pushes it in front of the listener a little bit more. And I think the LA-2A is one of those things, especially the CLA-2A from Waves. I can literally put it on a vocal uh, and I think it's it comes to life a little bit more. Uh, I've done a, a compressor comparison on one of the five minutes to a better mix series. Um, I'll link to that here in the video. You go, go watch that because you can listen to the LA-2A versus um, an SSL compressor versus a stock Avid Pro Tools compressor, all set to the same settings, um, all doing the same amount of gain reduction on a vocal, and you can hear the sonic characteristics of different compressors. And that gives you an idea that they bring a different flavor. But the LA-2A to me is just your go-to smooth, I want to gently squeeze things and bring some musicality to it. So I've got these on uh, my vocals, my lead vocal track. I've got them stacked. There's two of them here. Um, I've got them on background vocals. I have them on some of the guitars, um, the overdriven guitars on the left and right, because they don't need aggressive compression. They're already compressed. Every distorted guitar has already got like a slam dynamic, but it just sort of squeezes some more life out of them. Um, whereas the 1176s I'm using on drums. Okay, so I've got, let's see, where's the room mic? There's two versions of the 1176. And the great thing about 1176 as a compressor is that it's a very fast compressor. Okay, so it, it has a very fast attack, even with the attack knob where you can choose how fast of an attack you want. The slowest attack on this thing is super fast. So it's great for quick, transient, heavy material like drums or very aggressive vocals. It's great for rap vocals. It's great for aggressive rock vocals. It will catch things quickly. It's ready to move quickly. So this is this is why the 1176 is a favorite all over the place because it can handle very fast stuff. Um, and when you get this plug-in, it's really one plug-in that has two versions. On the bottom has the revision, so you either have the blacky or the bluey. And the difference is, is that the bluey is a little more aggressive. Uh, I think it squeezes things tighter and harder and more audibly than the blacky. So I would say this is your standard 1176. This is perfect for things. I have this right now on... Uh, the kick drum, I've got it on the, sn uh, the snare, I have the bluey, um, on the room mic, sorry, I'm getting you confused, on the room mic, I've got uh, the blackie, and it sounds really, really good, so it's a very fast, aggressive compressor, okay, um, you have just a couple of ratio options that are fixed, 4 to 1, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, 20 to 1, or the all-in button, which is um, a ubiquitous kind of sound, where in the, in the the day you could literally hit all four of these ratio buttons since they're not a knob you could push them all in and see what happens and it's just super aggressive compression but again two main knobs dial in how much input how much are you going to compress how much of the signal you're going to compress and you can balance the output here and those are the big two knobs and most people with the attack and release it's either left or it's right they're they're so subtle in between that it's almost like you've got two settings fast attack and a faster attack and then uh fast release and faster release. So play with those for sure, but you'll find settings that work really well for you. And again, I, I tend to use more aggressive compression settings on these compressors than say the standard Avid stock compressor. And I think that's because they're so musical. So the way I would approach a stock compressor plugin might be a little more tentative and um, gentle. Uh, because I feel like I can hear audible compression if I go too aggressive. But with a compressor like this, I find myself just, I mean, this 8 to 1 ratio and just slamming things down, and it still sounds good. And I, that's what I like about these plugins is they're modeled the units pretty darn well where I can really crush some stuff and it still sounds musical, and, uh, and that's a nice feature to have. So really with the 1176, you've got two sounds. I will pull this up, dial in a setting, and flip back and forth and see which one sounds better on the source material. I really like the blue stripe on the bluey. It really gives things a nice color and character. And then finally, the LA-3A, or the CLA-3A in this bundle, is uh, it's a solid state compressor that it's modeling. But again, it's very smooth. So this has just got a lot of beef to it. Um, this is great. Right now I have it on the snare sample on this track um, because it was sounding small and it really can beef up something very nicely. And really this guy, what it allows you to do is just, again, with a simple gain and peak reduction, just like the LA-2A, dial in simple compression settings, but it has a different tone than the LA-2A. And it's great for warming things up, fattening things up. It's great on bass guitar. It can be great on... Uh, a drum that you want to fatten up. It can be great on a vocal. Um, really, again, 
when people are asking, well, what do, should you use them for? Why should I use these plugins? There's really no good answer. And the should I use and what should I use are really bad questions to ask. It's more of experimenting with an LA3A, an LA2A, 1176, and hearing them for yourselves of what they're doing on your source material, realizing that they do sound different. And I think that is part of um, the mixer's journey is deciding what these plugins and these effects can do sonically for you and they give you different paint brushes so um, the la3a again is just another great sonic option to have so the big question is you know are these plugins worth it and should i get them let me pull them up here um, and who are they for uh, because this bundle isn't cheap when it's not on sale i think right now it might be 500 dollars for all four so you're looking at 127, 125 bucks a pop uh, for each compressor, which comparing that to the hardware units, this is a steal of a deal. But that's the whole point of the recording revolution is that things these days are just way more affordable than they ever were. Um, let me pull them up here. Basically, I would say that the average person doesn't need the CLA compressor pack. Okay, if you're a brand new mixer, you just need to start working with your stock plugins and get to know what a compressor does. Watch some of my other videos on compression basics. Um, watch other videos and other people's tutorials on how to use a compressor so that you're not screwing up your mixes with a compressor. In fact, you're doing the opposite. You're making them better with a compressor. I think compression is one of the most helpful tools to a mixer. Um, and so the more you know it, the better your mixes are going to be. That being said, once you've started to get a handle on compression and you're getting great results with your stock compressor, I think the CLA compressor and classic compressor pack is one of the best buys right now because this not only gives you more control over your mixes, but each of these plugins brings an analog type sound. They've modeled analog units. They've got the sound of these, these hardware units where it's not just affecting your audio digitally. It's bringing, it's bringing sonic differences to the, the sound above and beyond the compression it's doing. It's not just controlling the level, it's actually tainting the sound. And I think that's a good thing. I think in-the-box mixes need a little bit of gridding up. I like saturation plugins. Um, I like the virtual console collection from Slate Digital. I like these compressors because they bring more analog vibe and nuance and character to your mixes without you having to do anything. Um, you can just grab one of these compressors, dial in a setting, and it's not only going to compress and do what you want a compressor to do, it's going to give some vibe to that track. Um, and I think that's why mixers love using their hardware units still. It's because of that, that just um, intangible vibe. These plugins do a great job for the in-the-box mixer. I think this is a great purchase for anyone who's starting to do this professionally on the side. You know, you get a gig, you mix an album for somebody, you make a few hundred bucks, take that money and buy a bundle like this. Reinvest in your rig because now you've got an LA-2A on every track you could imagine. You don't just have one hardware unit that you spent $3,000 for. You have uh, a million digital units that you spent $125 for, and you can put it on every vocal, every track, stack your vocals with them. You've got all the 1176s you could ever want on all your drum tracks, all the LA-3As you could ever want on all your guitar tracks and bass tracks. Um, I think I wish people would understand how ridiculously cheap a plug-in is these days compared to what the hardware unit would be and the flexibility you have. Um, are there other companies making uh, emulations of LA-2As and 1176 is yes. UAD, UA has some great emulations of these hardware units as well. Um, but that only helps you if you have a, you know, a UAD card or satellite or an Apollo. Uh, if you don't have that and you're using your DAW and you just need the plugins, Waves makes a fantastic emulation. I think these are some of the best out there. Um, so I think Waves is doing a great job with their emulations. I think they've partnered really well with um, Chris Lord Algae on these plugins. They've nailed it. Whatever they've done, they've nailed it. They're very musical. They sound good. I use them all over the place on my mixes um, because they just work and they just sound good. So I would demo them. That's the beauty of Waves also is you can just go demo them right now on a mix and wait until you're actually working on a real mix. So if you have a real project of your own, you're really ready to mix or you're working with a client, that's the only really the best time to demo because it counts. You have to get it done and it's real world. Um, and then you can use these all over a mix, be done with the mix and you get to keep that sound forever. Um, and then you have to decide if it was worth it or not. Obviously the, the demo will expire in 14 days or something, but it's worth experimenting with and seeing what it sounds like for yourself on your own tracks and not taking a guy like me, not taking my word for it. I can just tell you that I use them a lot, that I don't have a ton of third-party plugins, but these are ones that I use on every single mix these days. 
um, because they're musical, because they sound good, and they're fast and they're easy to use. Okay, I like things that are simple and I can just grab a knob and go. So there you have it, the CLA Classic Compressor Pack from Waves. You can get these individually. You don't have to buy them in the bundle. Uh, They're more expensive individually than they are in the bundle, go figure. But I think, again, right now, 500 bucks for all four. If you get Waves on a a sale or a a discount or something, they they definitely are generous with their sales when they run those. Um, But if you need them today, it's still worth the price of admission. You're getting four of audio's most beloved compressors, for less than one-sixth the price of one of these hardware units in real life. So check them out, demo them. Hope that helps. Again, this is Graham from therecordingrevolution.com. Appreciate your comments. Appreciate your feedback. I hope you are making some great music today uh, and this weekend, and I hope to see you on another video soon. Take care.